Hi, I'm Nikki Yeager. I'm a uh, calligrapher, bookbinder, book historian, and I have a blog called Modus Scribendi, and I write about writing manuals and calligraphy in the 16th to the 20th century. This quill is a little bit dull. You can't really see it, but you can see it in the writing. So I'm going to carefully snip off just the tip. And if I did it correctly, the quill, sh the pen should be sharp again. It's sharper, but it's not as sharp as I'd like. So we're going to trim it one more time. This time, I'm going to shave it back a little bit so that it'll be the same size. I'm just going to trim a little bit off of each side. This is a bit like sharpening a pencil. I want to flatten the inside again. And then... That's sharper. Nib is a little bit smaller, as you can see. It's smaller than that, but if you were writing a page, you could probably get away with it. When it's loaded up with ink, you see how it's kind of flooding. Got another quill that's a little smaller uh, nib, but it's much sharper. See how it doesn't flood quite as much? So that's the difference between a sharp quill and a dull quill. Watch how many letters I can get before I have to put more ink in the quill. Four, maybe. There are, you can make little reservoirs so that you can get more letters per dip. But one of the things that you'll notice when looking at the letter form, look at that part right there. And then here at the bottom of the H, notice that little gentle curve? That's because of the shape of the tip of the quill. It actually